We see so many players that freeze like a deer in the headlights when that ball goes into the corner. So the video today is gonna to give you some tips on what you should be doing when that happens. Hi team, Sandy here. Today we're gonna to talk about a huge frustration in your game, and that is something that a lot of players really struggle with, and that is defending the corner of the court. Today we're gonna to specifically look at the right-hand side of the court, and we're gonna talk about what type of ball you should be leaving to go into the glass, where you should be moving, and also what to expect, depending on the type of ball that is coming towards that corner. So before we talk about where you should be moving and, and what you should be looking for when the ball is coming, we need to identify what type of ball you should be using for the double glass because it's not going to be every single type of ball and also it depends on your level. The World Paddle Tour players, and I've done a video with Ali Galan which I'll link to up here, he uses the double glass in a completely different way that I would or you would. Uh, so we need to understand what type of ball we are going to leave for the double glass. And the simple answer is any ball that will allow you to have a better shot after it's rebounded out of the glass. Now, I know that might sound obvious, but so many times players are half volleying or volleying a ball that actually will bounce and come up away from the glass. Now, at the World Paddle Tour level, they use the double glass when the ball is actually more aggressive sometimes to buy themselves time to have a better defensive shot. But for us, we want to say any ball that is going in with a good amount of bounce and a good amount of pace that it will rebound away from that double glass. There's no point in using the double glass if the ball is bouncing, hitting the side glass, and then it's gonna die really low after this back glass because you just won't have time to hit a proper shot. So just as a very simplification, any ball that is coming in with a little bit of speed and has good bounce on it, most of the time you can use that double glass. So we've established a ball that comes a little bit faster that we might use the double glass. And if we're at the back of the court, then it normally means that our opponents are at the net. So more than likely, you'll use the double glass off a volley or off an overhead, yeah? You can use the double glass if you've been at net and you've been lobbed and it bounces and it comes away from the glass and you hit a bahada, that's absolutely fine. But the majority of times will be when your opponents are at net and you're at the back of the court. So we need to understand that to use the double glass after a volley, is much more difficult than after an overhead. Because of the contact height of our opponents being around chest height usually, or even lower sometimes, that means that trajectory will be lower and more shallow, and therefore the bounce will also be lower. It's easier for them to hit a little bit of slice on the volley, and that will also mean that the ball will die. So if your opponents are hitting a volley, be aware that that ball is likely to be a little bit lower, so your decision to even use the double glass might come into jeopardy there, yeah? So just making sure if you're using it off their volley that you have enough time and there's enough bounce on it to come up. If it's an overhead, their contact point will be higher. Most of the time, they'll hit into this double glass from the cross court. It can happen from down the line, but the majority of the time will be from that cross court. And that means now we need to look at these angles, but their contact point will be higher. They'll hit with a little bit of slice, not as much as the volley, but also probably with a little bit of side spin, and that ball will bounce up. So most of the time, it will be when you're at the back, your opponents are at net, and they're having an overhead. That is probably when you're gonna use the double glass the most. So before we go on and show the direction and the angles of these overheads, we also just want to clarify, if the ball is coming from cross court, it will come with a little bit more angle. If the ball is coming from down the line, which does often happen with a volley or sometimes with an overhead, the ball will bounce and it will stay closer to this side glass. So this is just something to be aware of that you can play a double glass shot from down the line, but it will end up being a little bit closer. As we know from previous videos, it's quite a risky shot to hit a bandeja down that line because they leave themselves exposed. So usually they'll try and get the glass involved and you just need to be aware that the angles will be a little bit shallower if the ball is coming from down the line. Now let's have a look at the hot spots on the court and the angles of where those balls will come out from these cross court overheads. So just so you get an idea of what to expect, we're gonna hit eight or 10 bandeja or vibras into the corner of the court just to look at the responses and where the angle of the ball when it comes out of the double glass. I'm not going to hit an incredible vibra or bandeja, it's going to be an intermediate level just so we can get an idea of where those balls will be coming out. <laughs> and 
And you can see I'm hitting with a little bit of side spin. I'm hitting with a little bit of underspin as well. A little bit of slice on that ball, exactly like a bandeja would be hit. Just to give ourselves an idea of where these balls will be bouncing and the angle of approach. Yeah. Some of these are hitting double glass, some of them are hitting single glass. That's not the point. The idea is that if a bandeja goes into this corner of the court, you have a rough idea of where it's hitting depending on the glass it hits first. So you could see there, even from the intermediate bandeja, there wasn't a lot of pace on it, but there was the right amount of slice and, and side spin on that ball. When the ball is coming into this corner and it hits the side glass first, it's bouncing and coming into this area here. And you can see when it hits the back glass first, it's coming into this area here. Sometimes it will bounce, hit the back glass and then the side glass and come here. Or sometimes, depending on the amount of side spin, it may bounce and won't quite reach that side glass, but it comes into that same area. So when you are receiving that ball and you're receiving an overhead from the diagonal position and you can see that they're going to hit a bandeja, you know that that will be a combination of side spin and slice. So this is exactly the type of results that you're going to be looking for. You want to be in a position here, watch that ball, identify if it's side glass or back glass first, and then move to the position accordingly. If you notice, there were really no balls in this center bit. So what everyone always does is they turn and they wait and then they end up scooping the ball because they're out of position. Yeah, you want to identify and say to yourself, right, side glass first. Okay, that means I know the ball is going to come here. Do I have time to move out of the way and play myself a forehand there? Or will I need to turn and play a backhand, but either way, I know that the ball will end up in this position. And if you can tell that the ball is going to hit the back glass first, then you're gonna be in a position here, either allowing it to go past you and playing like this, or it may come down your left side, in which case you're gonna turn and play that ball there. But really, really importantly, the one thing to get from this video is that when that ball goes into that angle and it hits the side glass first, this is where it's going. And if it goes in and hits the back glass first, this is where the ball will finish up. So it's also worth noting that if your diagonal opponent is left-handed, the response will be slightly different. Yeah, if they're hitting with side spin and it's coming from the diagonal, the ball will end up in this area here, regardless of whether it hits the side glass or the back glass first. Because it's got side spin on, it will bounce, hit that glass and come here. We're gonna cover that in more detail next week when we talk about the left-hand side of the court because it's exactly a mirror image for the left-handers going into this corner. But as you can tell, a key part is identifying, is this gonna hit this glass first or the back glass first. And a good way to tell, a lot of people use this, is they use the judgment of their leg, yeah? So if it's coming from the cross court here and it's going to the right hand side of the leg, that should line up roughly with the corner of the court and you know therefore it's gonna hit the side glass first. Yeah, if it's coming inside the leg, that means that you're gonna to have to move out of the way, but it also means it's probably gonna hit the back glass first, and then you can play like that. that. That is quite a good guide if you're relatively new and you're learning these, but the idea is once you get better, you will be able to judge it much better, and you'll know whether it's side glass or back glass first. So we covered here what ball you should be using the double glass on, the angle that the ball goes in, and where it will come out of that double glass. But it's really important to remember the three steps for your preparation. Yeah, the first is that ready position, the second is reading that ball, and then the third is reacting to that ball. And I will put that video down here, but that is a great place to go if you want to improve not just the double glass shots, but all of your shots.